Okay, so we'll discuss the problem called twosum here. Um, twosum is a fairly easy problem and it's asked in many technical interviews. It's one of the first problems that you would usually tackle when you're starting to learn about technical interviews. So twosum is a good problem. You should really know this problem very well and it's gonna help you solve a lot of other problems that are similar or use very similar techniques. It's also rated very easy on um, lead code. So definitely give this problem a try. So here we have an array that's given to us and it's called nums. Also, we're given an integer called target. We have to return indices of two numbers such that they both add up to the target. Let me give you an example of what this means. So here we have an array and we our target value here is 11. Let's go ahead and solve this problem here and see how we would actually solve the two sum problem in the algorithm. So here, to add the, the two numbers to the target, we would have to pick eight and three because eight and three would add to the target. And once we pick that, we want to return their indices as the answer. So the index for eight is one and the index for three is two. So in our final answer, the output would be one comma two. Now this here is a very simple example. A few things to remember is that the index here they can they always have to be two different indexes. So let's say if your target value is ten, you just cannot pick two fives here. You actually have to have two indexes um, in your in your in your array. So like one, zero comma zero cannot be an answer that's invalid. Also, it's always the case that there's only one solution in the entire array. There cannot be two solutions here. So you cannot have a 10 and a one here and also an eight and a three here. That would not be a valid question. So you don't have to worry about that. All right, so let's look at some of the ways how you approach this when you're solving this um, using code. So one of the typical ways that you would first solve this is called brute force. What you would do in brute force is that you would actually go through and see each of the combinations. If I am here, then I'll go through all of these numbers and see if I can find a number that's gonna add with phi and make it 11. If not, then I'm gonna go here second and then I'm gonna see, do the same thing here, and then go here. And I'm gonna keep doing this until I come up to the solution that's gonna add up to the 11. And once I get that, I'm gonna go ahead and um, output my index, index values. This would work, it's a very valid solution. So let's go ahead and see how the implementation of this would work. So here we have a function called to sum, and you notice it returns to it returns an, a vector of integers. Now inside of this inside of this function, we are given two parameters. One's going to be an integer of numbers, and second's going to be the target value that we have to match. Now, since we're returning a number of integers, let's let's go ahead and set up a vector that would we would eventually return. So here I have my vector set up and at the end, I'm going to re just return that. So notice that in our example here, what we are doing is we were first going going through the first, he first uh, number here and then following that up with the second pointer that would be responsible to match that with the second number. Uh, so to, to implement this in the code, what I would do is do for loop. Um, that would start from the first value and go until the end. That would be the first pointer of ours. And then I'd have to set up a second pointer and that would be another for loop. Now notice here, this thing starts from the second value. It doesn't start from the same number. So to, to, to do that, what I would do is inside of my for loop, instead of starting from i equals, I'm sorry, I mean j equals zero, I'm gonna start with j, which is gonna be equal to i plus one here. And it's also going to go until the end of the in, until the end of the array. Now, inside of this, what I want to do is what I was doing here. Let's say if I was here, 
I'm going to look through all these numbers and what I'm trying to do is essentially match with this target value. So here as well, what we're going to do is we're going to have an if statement and we're going to see if the number at i and the number at j would add up to the target value. And if that's the case, we're going to add both of those values into our target vector, target indices vector. And once we find it, we just break from our for loops. And then at the end, it's going to initiate this return target indices. Now let's go ahead and analyze what we have done here. So what we, what, we, what we did in our brute force was we did a for loop. And instead of that, we did another for loop. Now let's say our array has a length of n. That would mean that I am going through the second, this inside of inside for loop, I have going through that n times. So I'm running the loop n times and I'm going to run that n times loop n more times. So that would mean that I'm for the entire entirety of the, of the function. If it's like the worst case scenario, I would have to go ahead and compare n times n times. Uh, that would that would mean that the complexity of our code is n square so that we can call it O of n square here. Now brute force is a correct solution. It's valid. It's it would work. But it's not the ideal solution that we want to look for. There are more better ways how we can improve our code. So another way to approach this would be via hash maps. Let's say we have this array as an example again. So what we did in our brute force was we picked this element and then we went through all of these trying to find what the what the, the other part of the number would be that would add to the target. Now hash maps gives us give us an advantage here. What we can do is instead of just matching all of the numbers, we can basically do simple arithmetic. So we can do 11 minus 5, which is going to be six. So now we know that what we're looking for is actually six. So in hash map, if you just provide the value, it's going to tell you what, what's the key of that value in your array. And using that technique, what we can do is we just have to run through this array one time instead of going through it n time n, n square times. When we just run through it once, and do a simple arithmetic, we can just see, we can just look for the numbers. So let's say if I'm here, I can just look for six here and I can just hash the, in the hash map is gonna tell me if there's a six in this array or not. If not, then I'm gonna move here and then I'm gonna do a simple arithmetic that's gonna be 11 minus eight, that's gonna give me three. And just like, I can just look for a number three in this entire array. And the hash map would tell me that, hey, there is a three and the key, then the key for that is actually two. And so I can just take that and I can just add both of these numbers, the one, the current one and the other one, and I'm just gonna put it into my target indices and just return that as my output. Now what this does is that you notice we're only going through it one time. So it would, it would decrease our complexity to just n instead of n squared. So we would have O of n complexity here. Let's go ahead and do this in code so we can see how this will work. So here we have our function and it just takes two parameters like it did last time, nums and target, and it returns the same vector it did previously. Um, inside of this, we're gonna have the returning part. It's just a simple vector and we're returning it at the end. Now in this solution, we are, we are doing a hash map. So let's go ahead and define a hash map first. We're going to define their hash map here. And then after this, I'm going to do a for loop. Instead of this for loop, it's like the same as last time. We're going to do from the first and then go all the way to the end. But in this case, it's going to be a little different. What we're going to do is we're going to implement a simple arithmetic here. And we're just finding what the second integer of our value would be. So we're here and we want to find out what the second value would be. And in this case, the second value had to be six. So in the second integer, what the, the value would be stored would be the six, number six. And we're gonna go ahead and do an if statement and see if we can find the second integer in our 
in our hash table. So hash table find if second integer is not the hash table dot end that just says if it does if it exists actually, um, then we're gonna go ahead and push the i value and then the index of this integer into our tar uh, target indices. And once that happens, it's gonna break and it's gonna return. But notice here, you, you're never inputting into the hash map just here. So there's a bit more you have to do here. If you don't actually find uh, the second integer in your, in your hash map, what you have to do is you have to input the integer that you're currently on into your hash map. So for example, if you're here and you think you can find six here, but actually now we found six, what you're gonna do is input this five into your hash map. And then you're gonna do same for this one too. That That's kind of tricky because you see when you're in eight, you can find three, but notice that three is still not in our hash table. What, when we're gonna find this uh, solution is when you're on actually on three because eight is never gonna find three, but it's gonna input itself into the hash map. But when you're on three, you're gonna find eight because it's already in your hash map. Now, the reason why we're doing it this way and not the other way is because you can simply just go through this entire thing and put the entire thing in your hash map first, and then you can start looking for numbers. But if you do it this way, it actually sometimes reduces your complexity even below n, and that would help you in your runtime. And so here we are just doing a simple input. Now you would you would say that whenever you're doing a hash map, would this not have its own runtime? Correct, it would. So the runtime, whenever if you do a hash map, it's in linear time. So you don't actually have to worry about it. It just it's just very negligible. And when you when you have O to the end runtime, you just ignore that. And so your final runtime is gonna be O to the end.